As someone who isn't a fan of open-ended building games, the structured adventure of Dragon Quest Builders was exactly what I needed to break into this genre. Builders does an incredible job of merging the world of Dragon Quest with the gathering and crafting of Minecraft, and it does it all without ever really feeling like anything less than a Dragon Quest game. This is a magnificent adventure, and though there are a couple of blemishes, there aren't many other games as interesting as Dragon Quest Builders. Builders takes place in the world of Alephgard, the setting of the very first Dragon Quest game. Only difference, in this version the hero decided to join the evil Dragon Lord, which suspended the world into an era of darkness. That is until you, the Builder, steps into the spotlight. With your power to take raw materials and form them into items, unlike anyone else, you'll erect your own town, bring back hope to the people, and fight against the purge of the Dragon Lord. Dragon Quest veterans will feel instances of deja vu as they explore the ruins of seemingly familiar locales, even if a lot of it has been redesigned or demolished to the point where it's hardly even recognisable. There are occasional flashbacks to the jolly days of old, and even if you're a newcomer, these still serve the purpose of reminding you that this was once a thriving society and that you have the power to bring it back. The world building of Builders is immaculate and is all brought together with the witty writing the series has always been known for. But don't be fooled by the simple style though, Square takes the story in a surprisingly dark and hard-hitting direction, especially from the second chapter onwards, and this engaging narrative is what keeps the flow in check. Builders spans four different chapters, where the Builder visits different parts of the world and seeks to restore light to each one. Every time you enter a new world, you start your inventory from scratch, which is interesting because each world has different materials and some offer different twists. For instance, Chapter 2 is full of poisonous swamps, whereas Chapter 3 is a desolate land where food is hard to come by. What the game comes down to is building your own town and keeping the citizens happy. A lot of the time they'll be sending you out on quests or asking for specific items, and essentially everything you need is out in the wilderness, just waiting for you to find them. Every tree is a stick, every slime is blue goo, and every single block of land has the potential to be the walls of your houses. Items don't respawn, so you'll find yourself going out deeper and deeper every single time you leave your town. You can spend hours just designing buildings and tidying up your town, even if that's not always the objective. Sometimes you'll be taking on hordes of evil Dragon Quest monsters, sometimes you'll be saving lost villagers and bringing them back to the town, and other times you'll be protecting the town from minions of the Dragon Lord. Even the more creative players will want to follow the story, as gathering new materials or hearing of specific items will cause the builder to learn a new blueprint or recipe. No matter what you're doing in builders, everything feels like it has a purpose, and there's a constant sense of progression. Though there aren't RPG mechanics, like leveling up your hero, your personal growth comes in the way of building better and better weapons, and sometimes you'll be rewarded with items that expand your health. Now there is a more freeing environment in the way of Terra Incognita, which unlocks after Chapter 1. Here you can escape the narrative and simply build without fear of being attacked. Each of the four chapters and builders lasted me around 7 hours each, and with the endless possibilities of free building, you're looking at one heck of a large game. Enemies aren't really enemies in Builders, they're walking packs of raw materials just waiting to be cracked open, but this is where the issues start to kick in. When you're taking on slimes and other low-level enemies, the combat's fine, but when it comes to larger foes like scorpions and zombies, you'll be looking at something a little more clunky. Not only does it not really feel good to dance around and avoid predictable attacks, but the hitboxes don't always make sense. This is further exemplified by the boss battles at the end of each chapter. Now there's a real sense of a last stand as the town you spent hours building falls around you during the onslaught, and that's a thrilling feeling, but the battles themselves aren't always too intelligent. Sometimes you'll need to restart them and come back with different items, and for this one I needed to build a larger structure to reach the height of the bird. It's certainly something I'd like to see improved in Builders 2, though there's still a ton of merit to this game. It's a world and story all its own, and the gameplay loop of gathering and building is so addictive. The camera's seen a few improvements since its debut on PS4, but it still doesn't really like being indoors. Word of advice, if you're going to give your house a ceiling, build very high walls. There was one moment where I fell underground and couldn't see a thing. It was pretty claustrophobic and I had to blindly dig my way out. For the most part, the camera works well, but it's not always perfect. Now the soundtrack's really good, but in each world you'll be hearing the same two tracks again and again. It's fine for an hour or so, but after seven, it becomes a bit grating. Outside of that, Builders is still very much the same game it was on PS4. It performs great on Switch, and the handheld aspect truly elevates the experience. It's so easy to pick up the Switch in handheld mode, find a few materials, and then just set it down for later. Now there aren't any touch features, which is a real shame as it could have heightened the inventory management. But there is somewhat exclusive content in Terra Incognita. 
It's very easy to miss, but there's a great saber cup just a few steps away from the save point, and this little guy can take retro blocks from enemies. With these, you can make towns and objects that resemble the look of the original game. It's a neat extra, but maybe not something worth double dipping for. Though the Saber Cub is tremendously overpowered, it makes exploration and combat an absolute breeze, but you won't find him in the story mode. Dragon Quest Builders is one of the smartest takes on Minecraft I've ever seen. There are a couple of bumps along the way, but it fully succeeds in taking the basis of Minecraft and fusing it with RPG elements. It's an addicting ride from beginning to end, and if you haven't played it before, this is the version to go for. And for that reason, I'm giving Dragon Quest Builders an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our channel for more on Dragon Quest Builders.